I keep saying what's special about Casbis is. The primary benefit to being a Casbis is intellectual stimulation and learning from each other and having time to think deeply. But it's also fun to be here. It's that funk, I think, that makes this place really special. When I think about Caspers, I think about it as a space that is safe for people to think. Everyone who comes here comes with the intent to learn from each other. It comes with an open mind, an open heart, and an open spirit. And I think more than anything else, that's what makes a Caspers experience valuable. Just sitting across the table from people and sharing ideas, whether you're confident about them or you're just starting to think about them, there's just that camaraderie that happens around lunch tables, around other activities. You know, some of us have gone out on social events on weekends, and even that became, in a way, a space to safely express what one is thinking and what one is not sure about and what one plans to do, which picks up on a Monday when we come back and so forth. So it's really been just a variety of communal spaces and interactions that have allowed us to grow as people, as researchers, and as thinkers. Especially um, in light of the pandemic. Now we know how difficult it is to be separated from one another. And both the seminars and the lunches build community. The seminars were about hearing a colleague's work, providing constructive criticism, listening, being open to feedback, from colleagues from um, different fields, different disciplines even. Similarly, the lunches were about exchange, about conversation, uh, and much less structured conversation. Both built community and are essential for growth and for security, just for knowing that one is a part of something bigger than oneself. There were also a series of uh, special events where we have external speakers who come in, you know, more prominent, for example, former fellows with very distinguished careers. And we had a series of very interesting and very pleasant social events like wine tastings and other things that were also very important in terms of creating that sense of community among the fellows. But then there are these other spaces that are much more informal and sort of organized by Caspers Fellows ourselves. Uh, a couple of my favorite are the reading groups that we've uh, established, many of us who work on these different uh, domains of inquiry. And that was a really important part of my experience here. Uh, people made fun of me because I was part of three different reading groups uh, on democracy, on social norms, and on the commons. I, along with a group of folks, are part of the identity reading group. And we sit around and we call it the cookout. Uh, and that's in reference uh, to the fact that many of our scholars of color who work on race are there in the reading group. And the cookout is a place where you can sort of let your hair down and, and, and catch up and talk about serious ideas, but in a sort of casual uh, and community-centric way. And so the, the reading group and the cookout uh, has just been a key part of my time here at Caspis, where I've gotten to connect with, with colleagues I didn't know previously uh, and, and even some I did know, and it's just been a really special uh, space for that. Something that was really important for me also in terms of uh, finding community and promoting conversations, promoting moments where uh, you know, just by talking about different things, you end up having good ideas. Uh, lots of people in small groups, twos and threes, they went running up the dish, they went walking around the dish, they went for walks around, uh, around the grounds. And those, again, are very special, uh, something that is very special about Casbis that, again, creates that environment where 
ideas can flow, conversations can happen. The, I mean, the dish walks are really such a special thing and I know a couple of us were able to have it consistently and compete in terms of how quickly one group can get it done or how slow the other group has been and this has created friendships. And the collegiality is great, but part of what creates a room or a space for trust in academia are those friendships. Being at Caspus uh, leaves you time to wander intellectually, you know, as we go and walk uh, in the nature area surrounding uh, uh, Caspus, you take uh, uh, new trails, new paths, uh, uh, and it leads to beautiful discoveries. And it's the same intellectually, you take paths that you generally don't have time to take when you're taken in your busy uh, daily academic life. Now I'm sitting with different ideas that are of course enriching my research but require me to read wider, speak to more people, engage with different theories, most of which actually challenge what I came here thinking. But there's also been just other legs that have developed in which I can now apply for grants that will allow for interdisciplinary work and stretch my work beyond the aim that I came with. So it's not like a research seminar that lasts for two hours or even a conference that lasts for three or four days. Uh, it's a conversation uh, uh, that goes on throughout the year. And in the meanwhile, you have time to change your mind several times to adjust, to digest all these new uh, ideas, these uh, new sources of inspiration, these new ways of looking at uh, the world and at society. Having uh, really the time to digest what you're working on, to uh, let new ideas uh, bubble up to the surface as you read, as you take notes, as you discuss with other people. And it's very interesting how really kind of takes a few months to, you know, for things to start happening, for new ideas to start coming to the surface, for me to start to make connections between different ideas, different concepts, things that I heard from other people, from other fellows during the seminars. Those sort of uh, casual conversations that lead you to those aha moments where all of a sudden you can see the stuff that you work on under a new perspective, under new light, and that really kind of takes you a couple of steps further in your thought process and in, your, and in your own research. I think in my case, I arrived with a certain idea in mind of what I, I was going to do. And there were two books I was supposed to uh, be writing here. Um, I did uh, I made significant progress on both these projects, but I mainly took time to read, to discuss, and I think over the year I've enriched uh, the theoretical frame uh, that will be uh, the one uh, uh, structuring my books. And all these uh, readings, you know, taking time to uh, follow ways that, you know, so far you had forbidden yourself to follow because of the lack of time, etc. I was able here to explore uh, this with some when as gratifying as I expected them to be. But some of those turned out to be like major surprises that will lead to a radical transformation of what my book will look like in the end. One of my uh, pieces of advice for future fellows is make sure you uh, uh, don't come with too many fixed projects in mind and leave some space to be surprised because these kinds of uh, encounters you have with uh, um, fellows coming from dif different disciplines, working on different fields. This results in so many uh, new possibilities. It opens so many new paths for research that you should make sure you keep time to engage in new uh, discussions and that might lead you to uh, go in very different directions. Uh, but these are kind of career bifurcations that do not happen often and they're very likely to happen here at Casbus. You know, making the most of this experience means 
every now and then reminding yourself that what you came here to do is, is not everything that you should be doing if you want to sort of live the Casbis experience to its fullest. So keeping some time aside for what may seem to be random conversations, casual encounters, fellow colleague who comes and says, let's go for a walk or let's go for a run or let's get a coffee. Uh, don't shy away from those and sort of retreat to your study because you've got uh, you know, that chapter that you have to finish or that paper that needs to get revised, etc. Treasure those moments where casual conversation can lead you to unexpected places. Many of the things that I will remember the most are really some of those uh, moments that I wouldn't have ex expected. Some of those conversations that I wasn't really waiting for and that ended up happening out of chance, out of serendipity, out of, you know, something that uh, I could not have planned for. I think when any of us is thinking about how we're going to spend a fellowship year, uh, practically speaking, we've got to be pretty selfish. We've got to think about how can I advance this project, one that's probably been on my desk for some time. And so I think you can come to a fellowship like Caspis and be selfish with your time in a way that you probably should be. But I would caution against doing that at the expense of really taking advantage of what makes this place really special. In even the most interdisciplinary of academic departments, it is rare that any one of us has this kind of easy access to scholars across difference. Scholars who exist in different academic departments, who have different epistemologies, uh, who think about and study the world in ways that uh, we might even regard as kind of funky. Uh, but it's that funk, I think, that makes this place really special. And so I think if one is interested in having the best possible Caspis year, and you'll certainly leave thinking, I didn't accomplish everything I set out to accomplish. But I think it's a missed opportunity if one comes to Caspis and doesn't take advantage of that which makes Caspis different than many institutes, other centers, and surely one's own academic home. It's that you have the easiest access you'll probably ever have again in your career to some of the most brilliant scholars working at the cutting edges of whatever domain it is that they have thought a lot about. And surely there's something you can learn from that difference. And so leaning into that difference, I think, is really what makes this a special place and one should take advantage of that when they're here. I realize now how, what a gift Caspis was. I miss Caspis. I wish I could come back. <laughs> and that's all true. I'm not lying.